that is ruined. Hello. Hello, everybody. We are here for another week of frustrating weather and frustrating machinery breakdowns. We've got behind me here our 12 ton grain dryer because the uh, sun isn't shining, we're having to dry the grain and then we've had a breakdown where the belts have decided to eat themselves. So the dryer is powered by this uh, electric motor which is absolutely fantastic but it does like chewing through belts. So we used to have to run a tractor on it but now we now we use this which is like I say a lot easier because you just hit the button and go. But um, but it does like chewing the belts out. We have put a uh, a fourth well a different a different pulley on here so it did only used to have three um it was a three pulley system but now it's uh, now we can run four belts on there but we haven't done the top one so the top one's still for three belts so we need to change that really in the winter time and then we can run four belts on it so i've just been to anglia bearings in peterborough pick up some new belts so let's get them fitted let's get on and then we can carry on trying some grain. The joys. First thing I'm going to do is turn it off at the plug. We don't want it starting up when you've got your hands involved. So if we look under here, you can see that we've got to slacken these bolts off so then the motor will go up, which will then mean that the belts will go slacker and we can then get them off. So we'll get them slackened off. That's that's how it should work in theory. Nope. Nope. 24. It's a 24. Socket won't fit on. Marvellous. <laughs> it's loose. These belts off. Could just cut them off, I suppose. That is ruined. That's not much better. Compare it to a new one.
one, two, three, got them back on. Now to do these up to pull them down to tighten them. Well, that's fairly, fairly tight, but I just think they'll soon go slack once they get bedded in. That's tying them down. Right, that's got them tightened down. But, um, I think you want to be around a foot of belt. You can have up to an inch worth of slack, so you should be able to move that an inch, which is probably about right for that. But like I say, they need to need to bed in. And I'd rather have them a little bit loose. So obviously you've got your bearings down the back here, and on behind here as well, on the shaft. So we don't want it too tight because we'll just absolutely ruin those. We don't want to pull the bearings out. So we'll see how we go. They normally can slip a little bit when we start it up with a full load on. So we'll see how it goes. We'll get the uh, protective guards back on and strike it up. Right, back on at the mains and then put the chute round so it takes it from the bottom all the way up to the top and when it's drying it just drops it back in the dryer but the chute is now aiming into the grain store because this load is dry so as soon as we turn it on it should if the belts are working tip it straight into the grain store So while that's emptying, we'll get a sample from this trailer. This is the next trailer to be dried. Gotcha. So we'll grind this up and see what moisture this is. So we need to grind it up so we can get the uh, moisture of the whole grain, not just the outside of it. And that feels wet. <laughs> so to sell it and to keep it well in store, uh, we need the moisture to be about 15%. This feels more 17 and a half ish. So we'll have to dry a couple of percent out of it, but we'll see, see what it is.
Right, put this on here to sort of squeeze the ground grains all together. Basically got my like, uh, flour. Well, you'd be a long time grinding it to get some uh, some bread. So we have different discs depending on the uh, crop. So this one, this one's for barley. We pop it on the top here, and then we're looking for two lights. It's not like uh, Formula One with five lights. Two lights. First one says that the battery's working, and then the uh, second one will tell us the moisture as we move the dial around. Probably need to be uh, probably need to be somewhere a bit darker. So every year we have these, uh, we have the moisture meter calibrated. It's part of our farm assurance scheme. You have to have them calibrated. So and it's saying that this one, because of the age of it, it's out of calibration. So we have to add a percent to it. So yeah, that did feel wet. And it is wet. So that's reading 17%. But in actual fact, that makes it 18%. But we've got it, and we've got it to dry. Whereas if you leave it out in the field, there's a chance it falls on the floor. So there we go. 17%. We have to add a percent because the calibration's out on it. So and there's the two, the two indicator lights. When they're both on, that's when you have the reading of what it is. So that's going to take a bit of drying. Now empty so we can turn that off and we can swing this back round. I've been doing one handed. To the front position and now all the grain will do we're going to turn this auger on and it'll empty it from the trailer go up into the auger and then goes up into the dryer and then you see in the dryer there's this large cone no grain gets in there that's where the air gets blown from the gas burner the warm air gets blown through that tunnel into this cone and then the grain is on top here and down the sides and round the bottom meaning that that's where the warm air blows to then dry the grain out and then once it's nice and dry we then turn the gas off and just run the fan on to cool it all down so that's how the Opico batch dryer works
this trailer isn't like a normal trailer where you need a tractor on to tip it. This trailer's got a donkey engine. Hello. So you start the donkey engine, it's got its own oil tank on there, and you pull the lever then to force the oil into the ramp. Start tipping up, so we haven't actually got a tractor on it. You don't need one to tip it. The beauty of a donkey engine. A bit noisy though. the auger that brings it from the trailer into the bottom of the dryer and um, we will then start the fan up and turn the heat off but I'm just going to get a uh, another sample which you do from this handy sampling station here because that 18% seemed really high I mean it was the last load we did the other night and uh, your last load when the sun goes down and the damp comes up, there's always going to be 
um, uetas. <coughs> and I don't want it to skew the whole load and uh, me trying to dry at 18% when actually the average isn't 18%. That's what I need to find an average. What I should have done was climbed up onto the trailer and got a sample from along the trailer. Just being a bit lazy, really. But it's all gone in there now and it's all mixed up, so this will now give us more of an average of what it should be, or what it is. And then when we turn the gas on, the scent takes about 20 minutes, 25 minutes to dry out. So, yeah, to take out 3%, it's gonna be on for nearly an hour and a half, which is quite a while. But they're really good machines, these uh, batch dryers. You can um, put different screens in them as well so they can actually clean the grain as you go. So it takes all the muck out of it. Any, say muck, you know, if you've got lots of uh, rubbish and bits in there. But, uh, this isn't too bad, so I haven't got any screens in. Da, 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 da. We're in the shed now, you might be able to see the lights. There we go, light one. There you go. Now, move the dial. Ah. Yeah. I think that's made it worse. <laughs> oh my god. Right. <laughs> but this is the problem. It's a wet year, and um, you know, people go, oh, farmers all moan about the weather. Well, this is why. Because we've not been able to get on when we need to. And it just means that you've got to spend time doing jobs like this. Um, you know, electric, running that big motor at the front, and of course, gas to, uh, to do the drying. So it's all more cost just because of the weather. So that's why we're never happy with the weather. But at the same time, it's done the grass some good. Some of the cultivations we've got done, it's helped um, to let some wet into them so they will mellow easier. And this is the great thing about having a mixed farm. It doesn't really matter what the weather's doing. When the weather is scuppering something like combining, it's then helping out the livestock sector because it's putting the uh, uh, a nice flush of grass on because it, it needed a nice bit of rain to, to flush it. So, great thing about having a mixed farm, when something's not doing so well, something will always be, will always be doing well, so, in theory. Right, let's switch this gas on. So, this is where we turn the fan on, the large fan in here. Can't open that, it's probably bolted shut. You can see there's a large fan in there, that sucks air in, blows it, and then in front of the fan is a large burner ring, and that's where the gas will get ignited and be burning, and then it blows it into the into the cone. When I turn this on, it's going to be extremely noisy, and you won't be able to hear anything at all. I've also got a battery down there to power the ignition for the burner, so I'll need to connect that up as well. So, let's crack on. Try to put it in nice and slurry so we don't we don't wear the belts out. We don't wear any more belts out today, do we?
14 percent for life percent we're going to add a percent on so 15 percent which is what they want when they come to buy it because if there's any more than that we'll get penalized on price it's another reason for uh, drying it it always used to be 16 percent and then they moved it down to 15. it's amazing what a difference that made so now what i've done i've turned the gas off and uh, it's now just blowing cool air through well it's blowing ambient air through which today is cold so cool and uh, it's going to just cool it all down because you don't want to put it straight in the heat because it'll start to sweat if you put it in the heat when it's warm but this is turning out to be a horrible day for drying as it's now trying to rain and today started off really good i thought it was really windy it wasn't sunny but it was just an all right day it wasn't raining so look, we're going to get we're going to get combining so we're getting the combine ready to go i went and tested some and it was at 15. normally when it goes through the combine it goes up a little bit in percentage so it would have had to have come through the dryer um, but we could have been going and then it does this and it's, it's just another nothing day and it's just so frustrating so this was a pain in how wet it was but like i say it was just the last few tanks of combining on the in the night time um, when it was getting late and damp but at least we've got it in the shed and it's here and, and we've got it to go but we might have an Indian summer and the weather be really nice but at the same time yes we've got to get the combining done but then we've got to get the baling done and we've got to get the lamb work done so it's all just a knock on so we've got to get on and we've got to keep pushing on and, uh, and grabbing the combine where we can so but anyway that load's all done we'll um, wait for it to cool down and then get it into the uh, into the shed